you with all wisdom, let us be unhappy. Pray and give praise to the Lord our God. Pray and give praise to the Lord our God. In Judea, is known, his name is great in Peter answered him and said, 
Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And, and he said, Come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was uh, boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. Name of the Father, Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Him forever. My dear brothers and sisters, I have a story to tell you. My daughter Emma, she loves water. Every summer, especially this one, I would take her to, to the lake or pool and let her uh, be in the water for hours on end. And it is always a great struggle to get her to leave, to go home. Until recently, I had to put floaties on her uh, to make sure that she stays afloat. But recently, I tried to, to teach her how to swim. And with the help of some other people, she can now swim without any help, for the most part. But, but as, as we, I was teaching her to swim, I noticed something interesting. After a couple of tries to swim, I saw her gaining more and more confidence to the point of her claiming she can do it on her own. So I let go of her. And as soon as I did that, she started to float and she started to swim. But after a couple of seconds, she started struggling and she started screaming for help. I caught her and put her on my back and we started swimming together. It took a little bit of time. She does well with swimming now, but I always watch her just in case she needs her father to come and to help her. Our Heavenly Father, friends, calls all of us to great things. He expects a lot from his children. I would even go so far as to say that God expects us to do the impossible. When we compare what we can do with our own ability and strength to what God wants us to do, we will find it exceedingly difficult to understand how we are able to accomplish these great things in any other way but with the help of God. But that is the truth. God wants us to do the impossible. And we can do that only, only with his help. In the gospel today, we hear a truly wondrous account of Jesus walking on sea to save his apostles from certain death. This account is one of the most exciting incidents in the whole Bible. The Son of God ruling over the violent forces of nature. That is something to be amazed at. But this does not stop here. Because Jesus invites Peter, a mere human just like you and I, to come to him on the water as well. The story, uh, the story of this incident stands very clear before our eyes, and I have two important things to say about this. First, why did Peter want to go to Jesus and walk on water? We all know it is impossible for a person to walk on water. Hey, it is certainly impossible for some people to even float in the water. But you know what? We all have this urge inside of us to achieve something special in our life, something truly great, something that, we will, that will make a difference, something impossible. When we don't satisfy this powerful desire, something that we all have, we feel unfulfilled. Even when we think that we achieved something great in our life, we still 
are lacking something inside of us. And I think part of the reason Peter wanted to walk on that water toward Jesus was because he wanted to be part of this impossible reality of what Jesus was doing. He wanted to be there when the impossible happened. Hey, who wouldn't want to be part of something remarkable like that? And you know what? God wants us to do remarkable things in our lives, things that are greater than our abilities allow. We all have wonderful abilities that God gave us, uh, abilities that he wants us to use to make a world a better place for our families, for our friends and country, but that's not enough. We always want to be more. We always want to do more than we can. Now, I have to pause here and remind you what great, great things I'm talking about. I'm not talking about an invention that improves the quality of life. I'm not even talking about hard work that it takes uh, to take care of our families. I'm not talking even about a cure that will uh, cure this disease. I am talking about great things that truly make a difference in this world. Things that require supernatural grace, God's help to achieve. I am talking about things like courage that is lacking in today's world. Courage to stand up for the truth in the face of great danger to one's life and to one's career. I am talking about impossible things like true forgiveness that one offers to the person who hurts you very bad. I'm talking about giving up your life for another to live. I am talking about impossible things like a wife admitting that she is wrong. And that requires, I think, a tremendous amount of supernatural help to achieve. Just like Peter, we want to do the impossible. And just like Peter, we are invited by God. Each of us is invited by our Lord to journey into this impossible reality, to experience and achieve awesome things. And that's the second part of what I, was, I wanted to tell you. We can achieve the impossible only through the help of God. It is impossible to do the impossible without God. We can try our best, but our best is not enough. And that's the biggest thing that we can realize in our life. It is this very fact that we are nothing without God. We can do no good without him. As soon as Peter started his walk towards Jesus, the minute he took his eyes off his master, he started to sink. We will always fail in our pursuit of greatness. We will fall and make mistakes. But one thing that we can always rely on is that our Lord and our God will always be there for us to save us from the danger of evil and sin that sometimes overwhelm our lives. Evil and sin, these two are in a way of the life of greatness which God wants us to have. Only He can overcome these in our turbulent lives. We need His helping hand to pull us up and empower us to do the impossible. Today, Christ is extending his saving hand to you and to me. We ought to grab it and to never let go of it. If we hold on to Christ, that will be the best decision of our lives. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. Let all say, let all soul and hold my blessing. Let all mercy. Almighty oh, Lord, God of all fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Let all mercy. Have mercy on us, O oh God, for the greatness of your compassion. We pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Universal bond 
Pontiff Francis, Pope of Rome, most blessed Patriots, Jaroslava, most grandma metropolitan, Boris, Abbot, loving Bishop of Lan, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We also pray for nation under God, for government, and for all the military. of this holy church and all you orthodox christians always loving forever and ever Let us be a 
I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand with fear, let us be attentive to offering peace and holy elevation.
For the sake of your holy church, and grant that I may live in peace, safety, harm, and health for many years, and write me by the word of your truth. Christ, the Son of the living God, 
who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. Accept me this day, O Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not tell the mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas. But like a thief, I confess to you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come into your kingdom. May the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be unto me not for judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. I have sinned without number. Forgive me, O Lord. Approach with the fear of God and with faith. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Save your people, O God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the Holy Spirit. We have found the true faith. We worship the antiquated Trinity. For how we share with us. Oh, it's not and forever and ever. Yeah, 
virtues, grace, her love for mankind, always love and forever and ever. Oh, too. 